Have you ever had a DNF, a did not finish at an ultra event or at a race of any distance? Well, I can tell you I have had five DNFs, but I've also had 17 wonderful successes at ultras from 50 milers to 100 milers to 24 hour events. And I've even placed in some of these events and also placed in my age group. But my DNFs have taught me that DNFs are not a failure. Okay, they're very humbling experiences and they teach us a lot of lessons. Uh, my first DNF was in 2008 at a 70 mile trail ultra, which was very technical and I thought I was well prepared for it, but I missed the first uh, 19 mile cutoff by about 10 to 12 minutes. It was all uphill. I found myself scaling boulders. I also find myself uh, feeling out of breath from time to time, which was not like me. But I didn't give up. I wasn't too disappointed. I continued to train for my next 2008 Trail Ultra, which was 100K. And I was, thought I was doing pretty well with that one. But at mile 55, I started to puke just a little. And by mile 56, I was exhausted. My body was broken. I had uh, stinking body chafing throughout my body. I had blisters. Um, I had like diminished capacity uh, and I was just not feeling well and I knew that I have six more miles to go down the side of a very rocky mountain and I didn't want to risk getting injured or hurt in the middle of darkness even though I was with my pacer my husband and then after that uh, years later around 2013 I had another DNF my third DNF at another 50 mile trail ultra and uh, this was an important uh, race for me. It was part of my healing journey after surviving a, ma a major medical and surgical nightmare and surviving three abdom abdominal surgeries in a 10 week period unrelated to running. But uh, I had to drop, I dropped at mile 26 and a half uh, because I knew I wasn't gonna make the eight hour cutoff at mile 35. I was starting to slow down and not feeling as strong as I wanted to be. But it was a good experience and I was just so happy that I could do 26 and a half miles after surviving my medical nightmare. Then I had some more couple of successes and in 2016 for my third 100 miler, I was doing great. I was doing, for, my, for me I was doing great and at mile 50 I completed that and I had about 18 more hours to run 50 more miles and uh, meet the 30 hour time limit. But around mile 55 and a half, it started to really rain. It started to really pour. Uh, we were pelted by hail. I was so tired. Oh, and I was also wheezing by that time a lot more. I went into the race wheezing uh, with a sore throat and a cough, but my legs were strong. So I, you know, I did not want to start this race. And unfortunately, because of the weather and how I was feeling, I dropped at mile 70. I was just nauseated, exhausted, tired, and uh, my breathing was becoming worse. Um, and what was great was the volunteers really wanted me to stay. Come on, Miriam, you can do it. We've only got 30 more miles. Um, but I said, no, I don't feel well. As soon as I got back to the hotel, I puked and I felt much better. And then let's see after that. Oh yes, my most recent uh, uh, DNF was the uh, 2018 Naked Prussian. Uh, 50 mile ultra and um, I thought I was prepared for that because it was described as a very runnable uh, trail ultra and also very hikeable for the marathoners I should have known then uh, that it was going to be really brutal uh, there was a lot of uh, ascents and descents a lot of climbing of mountains and um, I missed the first cutoff at mile 26.2 uh, by seven minutes and I was not permitted to continue so I was a little bit disappointed, but you know what? At the end of the day, I got a beer mug. I don't drink beer, but I like to collect mugs. So it all worked out. And guess what? I'm not upset because I've already started to train for my next ultra, another 50 mile ultra. Um, I'm very excited about that. And I've learned some lessons from this past uh, fi uh, not finish. Um, but you know, in, in retrospect, when I think about why did I have those two DNFs in 2008, well, I didn't know it at the time, but I was B12 deficient. My body does not produce enough B12 on its own. And it made me very fatigued. It slowed me down. Um, and then what I've learned.
learned about DNFs is that sometimes our bodies deceive us. You know, we're really mentally strong to go on, but our bodies are not as strong. And then there are some other things that we can't control, like the weather. It's very breezy here today and kind of windy. Sometimes you'll get sleet, sometimes you'll get hail. Uh, the course can become muddy, and sometimes you're going in not feeling well. And those are the things that will tell us to stop before things get worse. So that's my DNF story, and I'm sure you have one too. If you want to learn more about my B12 deficiency, you can check out my most recent article in Women's Running Magazine, The Dangers That B12 Deficiency Poses for Athletes. Um, you can also check, uh, read more about my DNFs on my website, miriamdiazgilbert.com. And uh, remember, there are lessons to be learned from being a, uh, having a DNF. But remember, embrace your DNF, stay humble,